Um, I, don't, I don't know the audience, so I, I, some, of this, some of this might be going over the basics for you, but we'll all start from a common position. So intellectual property, what is it? Um, uh, it, you know, it covers quite a broad range of types of protection of different aspects of your product or your process um, or, or your brand. Um, Coca-Cola, you'll all know it. There's, there's a lot of IP in that, in that image. Obviously, the Coca-Cola trademark, um, a well-known trademark, both the word Coca-Cola and, and that font, the, the way they make it look. The bottle itself is a registered trademark in New Zealand. Nobody else can have a bottle that looks the same. You can go on the uh, iPod's website and see that trademark registration. There are also rights outside of that trademark registration just because, you know, it doesn't make sense that other people could come in and, and look the same as Coca-Cola and expect to sell. So you've got rights which be in what we call passing off and under the Fair Trading Act to stop people trading on your brand or your reputation. The uh, bottle cap originally was a patented bottle cap so other people couldn't cap their bottles in the same way. Um, and then the, the formulation of Coca-Cola itself um, a trade secret as to how they do it. I don't know how much of it, it is a secret now, but um, we'll talk about each of those different types of protection. Another exam example is the, uh, the Formway Life, Life Chair. Formway is a company out in Seaview. This is their chair. There are seven different types of patent in that chair. Um, how the armrests move backwards and forwards and, and clip into different positions. Um, the, the, well, there's, there's a lot of them. What, the main one is, is also the folding mechanism. You can lean back and the seat goes up, and it's, it's a very comfortable chair. So patents, it's a registered right. Other people can't make things the same way or that function the same way. It's a right that lasts up to 20 years. Um, and it is a very, and if, if you're going to, you know, put IP over a range, that's, that's, that's the best. Um, KFC, oh sorry, and also Life Chair is a, is a trademark, so other people can't call their chairs Life Chairs. Um, KFC, Secret Herbs and Spices is a trade secret. So there's not, not registered, um, they haven't told the world uh, how, how you do it, which is a feature of a patent. A patent, you, 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 you tell the government, this is my invention, this is how it works, I'm telling the world exactly everything, all, all they need to know to, to, to do it themselves, and in return, the government or the state says, okay, you've got exclusive rights for up to 20 years. Um, at the end of that 20 years, anybody else can make use of that patent, and so technology builds and builds and builds on, on, on what's gone before. Um, that's really good because you get that 20 years and you're the only person who can exploit that idea. Um, so you make a lot of money in 20 years, well that's, that's the idea. But at the end of that 20 years you're just in the same position as the rest of the market. So drugs that come off patent, um, anybody can make them paracetamol, very valuable during its patent term, it's now off patent, it's a, it's a generic drug and anybody can make paracetamol. Um, so KFC decided to keep their secret blend of herbs and spices secret. And as long as they can maintain that secret, and, and quite a lot of effort has to go into that, um, that that's a right that will go on forever. Um, no, until somebody else finds out how to do it, you know, they can't do it. So that's the story about KFC. I don't know if that's true. I, I, it seems surprising to me you can't figure out what's inside KFC. Yeah, and, and I think it, that's right. And uh, I mean, you, you have to say what it does contain and what it doesn't, and you can say it contains spices, but the, the, the combination and the proportions and the, the recipe. And, and I think India quite often, or was it India or Fiji recently, I think K tried to get KFC to disclose their recipe. Um, and they said it was for health regulation reasons. There's some dispute whether KFC just wanted to get out of Fiji because it wasn't making any money in Fiji, but 
KFC would have left Fiji rather than tell them what the recipe was. Coca-Cola uh, wasn't in India because India wanted them to disclose its recipe. And until India removed that requirement, um, Coca-Cola stayed out of India, you know, a billion, billion people market. So the other IP there is, the, is their branding. Their trademark's really strong, the, the Colonel Sanders, the look of it, the KFC, Kentucky Fried Trick Chicken, all of these are registered trademarks. So again, that's a, a registered uh, right. You, 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 you apply to the, um, to the trademark office in each country that you want to trade in. And if you get your trademark, and there's a few requirements for getting a trademark, it has to be distinctive. Um, and, and usually non-descriptive, and, and it can't be con uh, confusingly similar to a trademark that already exists, um, you are the only person who can use that trademark in relation to the goods or services uh, for which you have a registration. So that's quite confusing. But So KFC, uh, if there was a, a forklift manufacturer and they wanted to call their company KFC, it's very unlikely that KFC would be able to stop them. There's no confusion in the marketplace that... Maybe Colonel Sanders is providing this forklift. Um, so, so you get your trademark <laughs> rights in relation to the products that you are uh, trading in, and, and you need to t tell the patent office or IPONS what, what those goods or services are. For, pay for all these registered rights as well, it's a country-by-country it's country thing. So, so, so you need to think about where, where you, which market you're going into. So, taking a step back, what is IP? IP is um, an ability to control or have exclusivity over different aspects of your, your products and your services. You can have protection over the function of those products, and that's, that's, the, that's really your patents. The threshold for getting a patent is quite high. The law around patents is quite technical and, and difficult. Um, the patent must be novel. It must have industrial applicability, um, and, you might, and, and you need to make these applications in country by country and, and meet the particular laws of those countries. So quite a high threshold. Uh, it must be inventive as well. Form, so what it looks like. You, a step down from patents, you can get a, what's called a design registration. So how your thing looks, and the, and the former chair has some design registrations. Not how it works, just how it looks. Somebody can make something that does the same function, make it look a little bit different, and you won't be able to stop them doing that. Um, but quite useful, for example, you know, um, the, the form of the Coca-Cola bottle would be a design registration, possibly. They've got a trademark for it because it's identified as a trademark, but it doesn't stop other people making glass bottles, but they can't make them that look the same as that. The content, so, um, you know, the, the obvious one is, is, is taking a step away from those types of IP rights is copyright. You can get copyright in, in, in written works and software. Uh, you can also get co copyright in drawings and, and three-dimensional objects. So you can get copyright in, in the design of a Frisbee and the design of a jersey, um, which will stop other people copying that Frisbee or that jersey, as well as copyright and music and books and, and things you might be more familiar with. And the last one is origin. So an exclusive right is to be identified as the origin of a certain good, and that's your trademarks, your passing off, your Fair Trading Act um, protections. So that's the exclusive. What a trademark does is says KFC is the origin of this good. If you see a product that has KFC, a chicken product that's got KFC written on it, you know where it comes from. You've, you can have certainty about its origin, um, and, 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 you, and, and that trademark right allows you to prevent other people from confusing people as to where the product comes from. So th there we go. The other one is, is the confidential information, um, and that's your trade secrets. Now the important thing about confidential information is it, it's about the way these other ones all arise out of, out of statutes. The, the law says what rights you have. Um, copyright, I mean, sorry, confidential information is about how you relate to, to the people you're doing business with. 
So if you've got staff, um, you have to be very careful about um, having them bound by obligations of confidentiality. If you're dealing with distributors or manufacturers who are making your product, you have to be very careful about what you tell them. I mean, the best way to keep things confidential is not to tell anybody. So, and I think that's KFC's approach, that a very small number of people who actually know what the recipe is. Is that just sending order of protection? Oh, no, just... Well, I mean, there's no, there's no formal protection of confidential information. Obviously, there's no particular order there. Confidential information can be very useful because, because it can last forever. Um, yeah, no, not, no particular order. I can't see an order there. So, just looking at the time, um, things to think about. It's very hard to, you know, to give you the things to think about IP because each different packet of IP has, has got things to think about. But if you have an invention, if anybody in here has an invention that's part of their business, um, you know, if you don't remember anything else, just remember to keep it secret. Um, not to disclose it to anybody until you've got patent protection. Patent law says if, if, if it's published in any way or used uh, um, commercially in any way, before you get your patent or you apply for your patent, you, you, you don't get protection. There's some minor exceptions to that, which you can go and see a patent attorney about, but I, you know, I think the rule is don't tell anybody, don't use it, don't seek funding, unless you've got really good obligations of confidentiality with those people you're talking to. If you do, uh, or you put in any form of publication, you lose your rights. You'll never get your rights. Uh, and, yeah, you, you never get your rights. And, and to the extent you can't keep it secret, you, you can't then rely on it being a trade secret or confidential information. Make sure you get ownership sorted out. Make sure you get assignments from your staff to you so that you own, or your company owns, the IP that you have. Think about enforcement. No point getting IP rights if you can't afford to enforce them can be very expensive. Some things are much easier to enforce than others. Trademark registration is much easier to enforce than not having a trademark registration, although you still can, it's just more expensive. Um, think about how it links to your market strategy. What markets are you going into? Where do you need protection? Um, what am I relying on? Trilogy, you know their brand's really, really important. That's what they're relying on, so that's where they should focus their efforts. Um, so it needs to link to your market strategy. And then the last one is freedom to operate, and you'll hear patent attorneys talk about this. So freedom to operate is, you know, you can be building up your business plan, you head, head out to the market and you get there, and you find somebody else is already there with the same brand, with the same technology, um, or something that looks very similar to what you're doing. You don't have freedom to operate, they will stop you. They'll use their IP rights to stop what you're doing. So before you put in too much effort, look out into the market, look what's on the patent register, look what's on the trademark register and don't invest a lot of effort in building up a business that um, uh, you know, will get stamped all over by somebody else's IP. So I'm pretty much out of time. Um, my last image is, is a bucket of water leaking. Um, I think a lot of you guys will be big picture people uh, and I know, you know, I'm a lawyer and, and, and I'm a details person. So I, a bucket it looks really good, big picture, and it should be fine, but it, you, you, there are details that you need to look at, otherwise it'll, it'll all, the water will all leak out and you'll have nothing. So keep moving on with the big picture, but get somebody on board who can and look at detail and, and make sure you don't get tripped over and the value of your business, the value of your idea, doesn't leak away because you, you've missed a detail. Um, and and, and they're not, it's not too difficult, it's just that somebody needs to look at these things.